everybody, Texas Stroker here, Lance's Performance Shop, LoneStarMobars.com. It is Sunday night, about 7.40, and you are in for a treat. So, uh, last weekend, about this day, time last weekend, Vera unveiled a crud ton of new stuff people are super interested in. Uh, Wednesday, they came up on the, or I guess Tuesday night, Wednesday, they came up on the KC Tool website. Uh, as well, went ahead and kind of walked you through all that stuff, got everybody's feedback, what you were interested in, what you wanted to see. And spoiler alert, a lot of that stuff is here now. So we're just going to jump right into this. Part of me says just throw the stuff out here and then make standalone videos on it. Part of me says stick to the usual format. I don't really know what would be best, but what I can tell you is we definitely exceeded the $100 mark. So we got the German Tool sticker pack. Any order you place, whether you get all these items I did or whether you pick up the cheapest item we got, you get a bit of things. These are currently still from VIT, and uh, it's a number two Phillips, so very cool stuff there. Uh, the seasonal, if you're still interested, which that ought to be wrapping up, yeah, September 30th. Uh, we've got the uh, Halder stuff, primarily. Uh, so if you're looking for some mallets or a hatchet, that's actually kind of a cool hatchet. I'm not uh, super versed in what those should cost, but uh, it's rare that we've seen this stuff on sale, so it's kind of cool you can pick some of that up. Uh, you can find it. I'll try to remember to link to it. But uh, with that said, you got until the 30th if you're unaware of that, and I pointed that out because if I wasn't expediting the release of this, you probably wouldn't see this to like Super Bowl, Valentine's Day, March. I mean, we, we're still stacked, if you're curious. The videos are still stacked. I've got tons of the Ram Revival stuff. Haven't released that either. Uh, so this, though, like I said, when we have something kind of special or pressing, and I don't spoil too much, we release it. And that's what we're going to do here now. Before we do that, I've got to start right here. And uh, this little guy has been fantastic for me. This is what I've had in my work bag. It's what I use whenever I uh, take motors off the pallets. This is from Vid. It's their Pro Top Tool. Pro Top 2, you'll know it's an impact driver. The coolest thing about this, this was like the smallest impact one I had. And if you note, something's not quite right. Uh, in case in point, I think I can grab this one. This is the old style back before they switched to black and blue. And you'll note that it uh, looks really similar, right? Uh, Max Pro versus Pro Top, obviously that's not impact, but there's a black tip there and there's not on this one. We lost him. We uh, we had a casualty man down. <laughs> it's uh, very sad because that worked really good. Some of these staples, and not just like the brass staples at the top, but essentially, you know, like it's motors and they're on a pallet and then they use the thick, the super thick. That's why, you know, if I seemed extra geeked about the Cudex when it was coming out and announced, that's I cut a lot of thick cardboard. And this cardboard is typically they shoot staples through. And sometimes they shoot one here, one here, and one in the middle. And sometimes there will be three rapid fired here. And sometimes they hit wood, sometimes they don't. But they're those ones that wind up looking like this. They're like the super long legs and a very narrow body, right? So <laughs> I typically come in with pincers and, you know, I'll rock them out. But a lot of times, you know, like the cardboard, like I said, it's thick and that head of the staple will be sunk in, you know, where I need to basically come in and pry it out. That's what I was doing. And uh, I was using, what was my main one? I was using a driver just like this, but it was an impact. And I was afraid I was like, the shaft would flex real bad. I thought, man, this is terrible. I got to get this guy out of service. So this was the smallest impact I had. This was a four millimeter. And uh, I took it, and I had a lot of a lot of good times with him. But uh, he's he's out of commission. So in the meantime, I had some motors finally show up. So I had to take this guy with me. And this is from there. It is their 4.5, four and a half millimeter, whatever you want to call it. And the problem, the one thing I've always knocked on this set, these chisel drivers. These are actually designed for abuse. I assume. I don't know if it might warrant that. It's unlikely since I was prying, but Vera, I mean, these are called chisel drivers, and they, they say that a lot, so we'll see. But this tiny, tiny one here is the 3.5, just like this, or a 4. That's a 4.0. This is a 3.5. You'll note this is not a striking cap. I've never understood why it was included if it wasn't a striking cap. And if you think, hey, it looks like you've used the snot out of that one. Look at the tip. What are you doing with it? 
Well, to be totally honest with you, it is really good for popping like electrical pins and stuff. So that's what it has been doing. Now this, I actually do use these quite a bit. This one, not as much as the one that step up like the five, five, but I wanted it back here at the house. So I would have it around and that leads us to two purchases. Our first one. Okay. I cannot for the life of me, I could not find uh, the VIT driver like I had in that 4.0. I couldn't find a smaller one either, so I snagged this guy. This will be going to work, to the bag immediately. And you're thinking like, hey, where's the Vera stuff? It's coming. I just, I got to introduce these guys because they're going with me to work. So <laughs> that's what we're going to do. I do timestamps, by the way, if you just want to skip around. Uh, this is super reasonable, $9.82 for this guy. This is the 5.5, so it's a very small cap. It's trilobe design. Some people love that, some people hate it. Uh, honestly, what I'm going to do with this, I don't intend to turn a slotted screw. I intend to pry staples, so uh, we're going to give it a go. However, since I could not find a 4.0, like you can find, you know, 3.5 and 4.0s and everything, uh, I'm not quite sure. That's like 530 seconds or smaller SAE. Um, I was like, man, I just want to find the smallest one I can with a striking cap. I thought the Vera was going to have it, and I was like, why didn't they put that in the set? Then I found out it still didn't have it. So, by gosh, if Ghidor, under their part number, <laughs> 1845209, doesn't have a three and a half striking cap you're thinking like that's way too small for a when you're like well i'll be dinged <laughs> look at that so like i said you know the five five it's literally a deal where this like half of the time and it varies it's a couple of different factories and they all pack and band and do everything slightly different but there are times i cannot nest that between the staple it's almost like you have to pry and then turn and then hope you don't chip type of a deal this is kind of the ideal size, honestly. It's just it should also theoretically be weaker. Now, that said, when you come in and you grab this shaft, you get a little bit of flex with it, right? Uh, obviously, we know we can break the tips on this because I've just done it. Uh, this one right here, I wish that I could get the 3.5, you know, tang through type of a deal. It's got a bit of flex. This is the smallest one, okay? We got 3.5, we had a 4.0, we have 4.5 from Vera, and we've got the 5.5 uh, from Vit, but check this guy out. Like, I was playing with this the other day. That thing is more rigid. Now, that could come back to bite me because the tip might splinter off easier, but I want to give it a go. Now, this thing, uh, the Vit, super, you know, like, way more common of a size you can see the tip comparison there this is like 982 this guy's a little spindy i think he was around 20 bucks 21 somewhere in that range Let me get the exact price 21 so the thing is i have a set one of the first purchases i made one of the early early tool hauls and maybe the first gador stuff i brought in it was in fact their striking cap drivers just like this however the set doesn't go down this small so i thought you know what i'm gonna give it a go i've not broke any of those but I'm telling you, the rigidity on this thing is pretty impressive. So the downside to the Ghidorah, like, it's just not conducive for speed turning. Now, torque, break something free, tighten the snot out of something, yes. But my deal is, it works pretty well if you're going to stab or you're going to pry. So I don't mind the profile near as much. So I'm going to take both of these in the event that I break one. I've got a backup on hand. And we can just kind of leave the Veras be, if you will. So um, by that, I mean here at the house. Now, coming in next, this is something. In that video I highlighted to you, let's say you're just going to get one item. Maybe you got the, you know, bit holding ratcheting T-handle or, the, you know, the quarter drive ratcheting T-handle. You would be like $2.50 away from free shipping. And you would be crazy whether you get a couple of bits, a screwdriver, anything to not get the free shipping and at that point in time when i made the video the tool of the day was from stabila which none of their stuff is almost ever on sale but it was their mini level keychain and it was uh it's currently 336 i think then it was like maybe 299 if that but 
I told you, I said, hey, if you just buy one item, you got to get this because you'll save free freight and you'll have the keychain to show as well. So uh, I honestly do practice what I preach. And same thing, and I've just bought one item, you know, and it was one of those T-handles for 72. This guy would have come with it. I would have gotten free shipping and I would have been happy. I can tell you right now it is actually functional. If you're curious, you can kind of see the bubble there as I balance out perfectly even. So, sort of a novelty, yes, kind of a conversation piece, yeah, but it's also functional. So, it's not that much smaller than their cool little mag levels I like, but uh, very, very positive field of view there. And in a pinch, let's we'll say you're on the job site or you're helping a buddy, and you're like, man, I wish I had a level, you know, does this look square to you? Pull out your keychain, and there you go. So, if you want this, 336 is not bad. So, if you're thinking, oh man, I wish I would have got that on tool of the day. I do too, but you're not paying that much more. So, uh, let's see here. What next? I guess we'll get rid of this guy. And if you're thinking like, hey, what's what's this doing here? Where's the new stuff, jerk? Like I said, timestamps. But this guy right here, um, I'm not even sure. That I've been interrupted like four times uh, before I started this thing. So right here, I'm not even going to waste your time and unpack this, but I got a replacement blade. It's all of like $10.38. These are the really cool ones because, again, uh, this thing, the whole thing comes apart if you're unaware. If you're like, hey, that looks like a bit holder. Well, it is a bit holder. The magnet's insane, but this can work as a bit holder, and you can also deburr with it. Now, the downside with the magnet being super, super good is, of course, if you were to use this on anything ferrous, your shaving stick, and that's super annoying. However... If you're using this on plastic or like I've been kind of wearing it out on aluminum recently, it works really, really well. The other thing I've been using this for is I've gotten into a situation. I had to do a couple of projects. I had ring terminals, but they weren't quite big enough for the stud. Obviously, I can't change the stud on a bulkhead, but I can enlarge the ring terminal. Kind of hard to drill out a ring terminal. It's super thin. It's kind of sketchy. <laughs> So I've been using these and I thought, you know, I should probably have a spare blade on hand because uh, we're going to wear that down and dull it out at some point. So that's what we did. So that guy right there is hovering around the $10 mark again. I'll have everything linked down below. So I'm debating what we want to do here. We're 12 minutes in. Uh, this is why I literally thought of just introducing the items kind of like this, kind of like that and uh, go into town now what we did here uh, i point blank told you i do not lie i'm straight up honest when i make these videos with you i said hey i was in the market for an impact driver and i'm not gonna lie i was heavily 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 leaning towards the proto i get really good prices on proto it came in a case typically that's not something i would care about but it's like i'm not going to use the bits from the impact driver to do anything else aside from be utilized with the impact driver so it sort of makes sense in that case right uh you totally could it's just you know if you wore them down that would kind of suck then when you're like hey i need to break this number three phillips free and i've worn it out in daily use or on hinges and wood or something stupid so uh, that is where this one came in. This was a justified purchase. True story, I wanted to go tool only. And then I got to thinking about it. And I guess we're just going to start with this guy. All right. Tool only on this is like $87.50. You know, this stuff could go on sale soon. Prices may come down. Who knows what's going to happen. The issue is, as of now even, I don't think KC Tool has added the standalone bits. I also didn't know when the bits would be available. Is it early October? Is it like December? Who knows? and they're longer bits than you typically see some impact driver sets you'll get like a longer bit you know and uh, most of them you just get the small stubby ones and then it's a question of is it quarter or is it five sixteenths if you have some collection of old five sixteenths bits and you go and you buy a new impact driver and it's quarter well you can't use your cool big bits anymore right so i got to thinking about it 87.50 seemed kind of steep for the tool only and 137.50 while that's pretty spendy I thought to myself, like, hey, you know, this is a, was it a 19-piece set, I'm pretty sure? I thought, okay, the case and then, like, a crud ton of bits. So, can I go out and get 17 bits for that kind of money? And the answer was, like, probably not, considering the length. They're sort of like the Vera extended length, right? Uh, 89 millimeters is what we're likely to see in here. And so that became my justification. Plus, I couldn't showcase it very well without the bits. 
will I like this? Will I wish that I had, you know, the proto one? Uh, everything at work that I've ever used, it's possibly proto, possibly an older brand than that, but it's just classic black body knurled. Doesn't really work that great, but you have it anyway. Uh, here in recent times, uh, a while back, like several years, I bought the little impact vessel drivers. I don't have good luck with those. I know some people say they're the coolest thing ever. I don't know if they're using them, you know, like as an impact driver, but I could not get them to work. The tips are great. They're good screwdrivers. I like the colors, aesthetics, and concepts. I just couldn't get them to work well for me. Uh, Koken has the attack driver and a foam set. You can usually get it with sockets. It's actually priced pretty reasonably, in my opinion. Thing is, I've never used it. I don't know if it would be any good. How did I come across this one? Then how did I go from Proto, possibly Koken for a little bit more money, with sockets, tons of sockets and bits, to this? Well, I uh, talked to Derek. Uh, you probably see him in the comments section, photographer up in Wisconsin, but he has the El Cheapo Pittsburgh and says it's actually good. I thought I was going to get to go to Harbor Freight this weekend. I was going to buy one. We'd eventually compare them. But the current style, you know, like I think Capri, like Klein maybe even, uh, Quinn from Harbor Freight, it's sort of like the idiot proof, it's almost like a chisel handle, right? Like, oh, you can't, you know, back in the day, you're a man and you just crushed your hand with a mallet, right? Now, you have like this oversized plastic edge guard. So those are super cool. Obviously, you know, like there's sort of a hybrid zone between like the old style Proto and then the oversized plastic shielding and everything. They both have downsides, and that downside is if I come in and I like bundle four of these drivers to stimulate the size that we get, right? Let's say that we're doing brake rotors, but let's say that we have a big drum, you know, like the hub's coming off. Can we actually clear? If this is the edge, let's just say this side for the sake of argument is like the end that I would hammer on, okay? So I take this side and I'm coming into the hub. What if it's a big hub? Like, will I have the length with that tiny bit to get there? Will the set that you bought have a big enough bit? Now, don't get me wrong, in certain situations and you have plenty of access, I can take this sucker, I have no obstruction, and I can just hammer down even if it is just a tiny, tiny bit. I can go to town and whack away. If, however, this also showcases very nicely, no impact, very small, decent size and really well executed keeping in mind that this is in fact the smallest tip on the Ghidorah but it's another story for another day so ultimately where I'm going with this is every single one of those we have a potential situation where it could become a point of contention and I can't even get the bit to the fastener that's seized to where we can impact it and hope that it turns free that is how I justify this, because this essentially becomes like this, or like the vessel that I didn't have good luck with, and I hope this is totally different, because otherwise it was a really big waste of money. Uh, but this would allow me, this is a much smaller deal when you just have the shaft, or in the case of this impact driver, the bit, okay? I can come in with this as an obstruction, I can get down to the mat, I can come in, blow the back end with a hammer, and hopefully rotate the fastener, okay? If we have the fancy big oversized barrel bodies, what if I'm making contact here and I can't get the tip down to our work surface? That's a problem and it renders the entire thing null and void, right? You're gonna have to get a torch out or something. So that's that's how I justified this. And if this works well, you know, that's awesome. I'm a happy little guy. If this doesn't work, this was a massive waste of money. Uh, and I would have been better off with Koken. I would have been way better off with the Proto and having like half the money in my pocket. And if the Quinn at Harbor Freight's good, I would have done good there. And then the Pittsburgh, I assume it's clearance out. Like it's not the usual super cheap price. It's like seven bucks now if you find it in store. Typically when they clearance those out, the Quinn will come down in price because they're going to introduce an icon item. Just FYI, it's what I've seen anyway. Uh, so the icon would sort of probably add some bits, a case, maybe be slightly better construction, higher price. The Quinn comes down five to ten bucks. The Pittsburgh is sort of just eliminated, uh, unless they're like, hey, you know, we sell a ton of those. And the fact that I could get Quinn or Pittsburgh for like sub, you know, probably like thirty, to, honestly eight to thirty bucks, basically forty if you're getting screwed over. Uh, the Proto, I could snag that really cheap with discounts. Koken, somewhere a little less than this, I'd imagine, same price. Again, depends how you option it out. 
Uh, this tool and the justification for it will entirely be predicated upon the performance. <laughs> So if it works, we did good, and we've got a lot of bits we can utilize. If it doesn't work, it was a colossal screw-up on my part. So, Because uh, this is a lot of money, in my opinion, for what this is. Uh, $87.50 steep, and then I was thinking, like, I don't even know where to get the bits, you know? <laughs> like, uh, obviously, a number three Phillips, I would have to go that route. A number two would be nice, equal slot sizes in the slotted, you know, in case you do, like, fences or anything seized really really old you know hinges type of a thing uh, but this comes with a wide assortment of bits and i'm hoping they expand on it because that might help me if it does in fact work but basically what we get is the case we get the tool and then in terms of our bits slotted it we get a four a five and a half and a six and a half uh, there are two versions of this i went with imperial this is not posi this is going to be phillips that's i think the main difference and then the hex stuff as well so a number one phillips number two phillips number three phillips i don't know about ever using this on anything that small i guess if you have it you could try it uh, Typically, I think of these with like a number three Phillips type of a thing, personally. Square drive, one, two, and three. Again, a number one Robertson. That would be pretty small, but again, I guess if, if you have it, you could try it. And so it's the possibilities there. Uh, the hex sizes. This is where I hope they expand. This is where I think, hey, you know, there's a lot of times where I have stuff. It's usually like water passages or oil galleries or something on an old motor that's been sitting around for who knows how long. And those things are seized over big time. People didn't put anises in them, Teflon tape wore down, whatever. There was never Teflon tape. It was rusted and they reinstalled it. Uh, all sorts of crazy things happen. It's almost always a pipe plug, right? So what you get in this set, imperial-wise, is going to be eighths, five thirty-seconds, three sixteenths, and quarter. Quarters, I mean, fairly common, but like for the big stuff, like the big plugs. I would like to see them add more bits because if this works and I can get the bits for like three to five bucks and I can come in and be like, hey, you know, I could use this on a 440 and oh, look at this, you know, old gallery over here. Then we start kind of like, hey, this turned out to be a good purchase. Uh, the Torx, which I believe is going to be the same metric or Imperial, you're going to get the uh, T15, 20, 25, 30, and 40. Now, the cool thing here. On these hex bits, they're hex plus. That's Vera's hex plus profile. That's what you want to see, what you'd hope to see. If you like the concept of this when we're done with it, but you wanted metric, it's going to be a situation where you would have posi instead of Phillips, and you would come in here and all your hexes would be different. Now, clearly, if this is good, good lord, I don't know what you're looking at. My apologies. We'll just back out. <laughs> clearly what would be the bee's knees is if I can come in here and I can get the number two and three posi I could come in and if I ever figure out like hey you know blank size is on five seven hemis and the seized all the time I pick up that hex bit and just piecemeal it together or they package a trio of them for a reasonable price and then like I said bigger sizes that's where I'm hoping they expand you know coming in it's been a while since we've had anything from vera like you know packaged well so uh, they do really trick packaging it's kind of the iphone samsung uh, flagship phone stuff if you will should have a piece of velcro yes we do should have a sticker i'm not seeing it <laughs> what's the deal vera where's my sticker uh, they have a chance to do like one-offs or something and uh, I'm, I'm not finding it there it is spoke too soon so very cool that's the sticker that we pick up well that's important to some of you there's your little warranty it's mainly i think talking about the velcro but this is what we want to do this is what we want to take a look at it is their highlights we're looking for the american flag and there it is to loosen the screw i'm just going to let you look at this okay and i'll read this to you so we don't have any weird focusing issues i'm totally oblivious to you Make sure that the impact wrench function is switched on, which will be the open lock symbol. Insert the bit into the driver, position the bit in the screw profile, turn the impact driver in the loosening direction, and hit the impact driver's cap with a fitter's hammer. They claim up to 700 grams, and each hit moves the screw 40 degrees. That's a pretty generous deal. 40 degrees, obviously circles 360, so nine hits, we go from A back to A, right? I think the vessel, the little impact driver, might have been 12 degrees, so 40 is noticeable. It's either going to spring or free, or it's not going to do anything, and you're going to be able to tell. So 
Uh, next up, they say position the tool straight without exerting any force. The 921 impact driver must be held perpendicular to the screw head. So again, it's 90 degrees. You got to come down. You got to have that right angle. We can't come in at a weird angle. You know, if it's on a horizontal wall, same thing. You got to have it perpendicular. Uh, do not twist the impact driver when using it. And lastly, use the 921 impact driver only with Vera impact driver bits. Again, that's the big deal and that's why we went with this. Uh, the other deal was I did not know if I could snag some impact bits if they would even be compatible. So that's further justification if it works. <laughs> so as you can see, I've not had very good luck with anything impact related in the past. Uh, which is why I was in the market for one. So use the driver only with their bits. Make sure to use the right bit for the respective screw size. When the impact wrench function is deactivated, a size 13 spanner can be attached to the hex bolster for greater power transmission. So to put all that into layman's terms by way of pictures, there's going to be a lock and an unlock. I think they said unlock was going to be actually impact. So I guess that would you've unlocked the rotation. Uh, if you lock it, you're just using it as a standard driver. You're going to hammer it. They claim it can handle up to 700 grams. That's a pretty decent size uh, tool. Put it on perpendicular. You can get 40 degrees that way. If you come in at an angle, no good. Not going to be a problem. Uh, you also want to, again, if you've got a number three Phillips, don't use a number two bit. And lastly, in standard form, non-impact rotation, you can put a 13 millimeter wrench on there and go to town. So big picture here, boom, kind of gives you an exploited view of the internals now. I do have to say, I'm not the biggest fan. These things are super durable. I always reference the German Tool Reviews video where he had his dog tear one up or try to tear one up. Some people are going to love this stuff. Some people are going to hate it. If you're heavily invested in the Vera to go system, this stuff's super cool. You can just Velcro it in. I mean, that's what all this stuff is. It's actually stronger than you would think. Now, note is you get it, it's totally sealed. Now, you may screw this up. You may get the flaps folded over. Stuff may fall out. But at least when you get it, you know, nothing crazy is happening. So it also looks super cool with this. That yellow is incredibly vivid. It looks way better than the craft form driver here. This is like an off yellow. You know, this is like a pure, it's like top banana curious yellow stuff going on there. This is sort of like an off color. So it looks really good in terms of packaging. Open this thing up. Ooh, she looks nice. Okay, this makes me feel slightly better because I'm at least initially impressed by the tool itself. <laughs> so I think every single slot is populated. So we, that's cool, but we also don't have room for expansion. But if we decide I'm never going to use this on a square or I'm never going to use Torx, you know, or I'm never going to go smaller than a T15 and they offer more bits, then we can come in and set that up. So I'm just going to come in right here and we're going to go to the quarter drive, which is interesting because again, it's looks like in fact going to be quarter drive. This is a good way to tell. Got quarter hex plus on this side and quarter hex you know, bit action on the opposite. So uh, this is uh, going to come in handy, I would have to say. But again, I would love to see larger sizes offered. That's just me and my experience. Um, I don't know what this is capable of handling, but if we get like three eighths would be good, maybe half, I don't know. I guess it depends, maybe it would only rotate lesser than 40, but who cares if it's working. Uh, coming in next, what I want to do, we're just going to go right to, oh, there's this number one square, so they're just kind of off. Um, it's kind of weird the way this is laid out. So you got your four, five, five, and six and a half for your slotted. And then Phillips one, I guess it's just the crease, the fold, that's why they had to do it. And I guess something has to go. But uh, then you've got your Phillips one, two, and three. You got your Robertson or square one, two, and three, Canada A. You got your four hexes, which those line up really well. And then we've got three and two for our torque. So this is actually very well laid out. It's rare that I get a case from that's like fully populated, but we went all out in this one. So we're just going to go ahead and grab the number three Phillips. Because again, that's typically what I wind up needing uh, with an impact driver. Bit itself looks decent as an 861. Uh, we're about to time out, so I'm going to take care of it. And we're back. It is time to get this guy free and take a look at it. Now, I got okay. 
Hefty little sucker. This is heavier than you thought it would be. That said, it's still fairly light. It's actually a... Now, I have used this one. Maybe that's like machine shop dust, right? Uh, let me grab one that I don't think I've used ever. No, that's been used. Uh, yeah, this number two that I have to set aside for testing, it's original yellow. Oh uh, yeah, they're about the same. This one just maybe looks slightly better because I guess it's a bigger handle and you get more of the yellow kind of flashing onto the screen. So cool stuff there. It is the 921. Uh, you'll note right here you've got the arrow and we are currently locked. So if I were to start whaling away on this guy, we're not going to do anything. This is where we could put a 13 millimeter wrench and break things free. If we rotate to the unlocked position, let me see, hopefully you can see this. I'm going to zoom in. So again, as it was packed right here, we're locked. Again, this is not impact. This is literally straight up. You've just got a big heavy screwdriver and a nice hex bolster. If you ever think, hey, why do these people make me use an 8mm on these stupid you know, heavy duty drivers? And you want something that'll hold a half inch or 13mm? Hey, this is the driver for you. Now, if we come back in and I turn it there, we're now unlocked. Okay, you can kind of see the master lock icon there. And this is where it would actually spring around 40 degrees. Again, they recommend safety goggles. Let's take our bit. It looks like it's just going to be maybe magnetic. Let's find out. It might just be a clip, honestly. It's got a... Can't tell what's going on in there, but since there's that collar, I'm inclined to say that's how it's set up. So this is just a very big, <laughs> heavier than normal number three Phillips. If you like a heavy driver, hey, you can go to town this way and never even use it as an impact. So if we come in, maybe I'll divide this up and we'll do like another video where we try to demo these things. I don't know. We're, we're already 30 minutes in, basically. I'm not going to take my soft cap off because I love having it. It's super handy. That's why it stays on the bench. But if we come in here, this is, I believe, was a 350. Maybe it's a 500. Something. It's not 700. But if I hold this and we are unlocked and I want to have the number three Phillips right there, we can hopefully see that laser etching. Uh, we might have to get... <laughs> I get this thing like set up better, but it's also kind of hard to hammer. I've got the tripod here if you were curious. So uh, once again, I'm going to try to keep that facing the camera. And yeah, it's just not going to be a good setup there. So uh, this is kind of stupid too. All right, we've got it. The number three Phillips, where is it? Way down in there. It's facing directly to that quarter hex. And there go my notes. <laughs> so we just need like a demo is all I can tell you. I'm going to get that put back together. Um, in terms of the impacts it takes, we barely hammered this sucker. It's wearing about the same as the chisel drivers. So uh, I do use the chisel drivers quite a bit, particularly the slotted ones. But in theory, this thing should work for us. So... Uh, the bolster is kind of nice I'm trying to see we just we'd have to have a situation where we could use it I think to appreciate it. So we're going to slide this guy over here because like I said I I try to do good on time and I just sometimes we can't <laughs> so up next We've got this guy the one that we sat down a second ago It is going to be probably what most of you were interested in whether you think it's the most practical, the most gimmicky, it's probably what provoked you and kind of caught your attention the most. This is their part number. All right, but like I was saying, got interrupted there. This is probably what captivated you the most. This is going to be Vera's part number. <laughs> Let's see. 004282. It is the Zyclop pocket set. Now, uh, this is, uh, this is going to be interesting. Okay, we're going to go ahead and slide the sleeve off. Packaging here again. I went with the Imperial set because that's what I'm going to get the most use out of. They're saying the combination drive is present, flexible head. There's a rotating switch for your direction. Uh, you've got three eighths square drive. You've got quarter hex, you know, bits if you will. You've got square, Phillips, 
hex and torx. When we spin this around, you can kind of see some of the highlights here. Our included bits, we're going to have a number one and a number two. I believe that's square drive. It's kind of hard to tell. Uh, then we've got a number one and a number two Phillips. Right here, our hex, eighths, five thirty seconds, three sixteenths, and quarter, which is what you see here. Which, again, this is why I wish this had bigger bits, or will have them. Torx, we've got uh, T10, 15, 20, and 25. We can rotate directions here. It's got the flex head that I guess has five positions. And are you ready? Because here we go. So, kind of an interesting deal. I've never seen them pack something like that. It was sort of off, but... Uh, is what it is. Note right here we've got the same sticker. Uh, no uh, Velcro because again we didn't trick this out. The price is still cheaper. If you get the textile case like this with three sockets and the extension, I don't understand that. I thought it was maybe an error. It's still like that. I know because I just looked. Um, my deal is if I can just get that extension, I think I'll be pretty happy. So here is the flyer. We're going to go through this as quick as I possibly can. So again, combo drive, flex head, and switched. If we just, I guess, start here, We're looking for Team America. Combination tool mounting, the magnetic drive, that's right, magnets, allow for direct attachment of both 3.8 sockets and quarter bits. It's got an integrated bit magazine, a captive freely swiveling bit magazine for 12 bits, a uh, quarter inch, 25 millimeter length, is integrated in the handle of the compact Zyklop pocket ratchet. Right here, there's the swiveling bit magazine. The swiveling bit magazine allows for the bits to be removed easily in almost any situation and cannot be lost. The bits are safely stored. Uh, so basically what they're saying there is it must be like a plastic stem that's attached. You know, I guess it could break at some point, but it shouldn't for a while. Freely pivoting ratchet head. The ratchet head pivots freely and can be locked into any defined position by using the slide switch that is positioned on either side. Okay, so more on that later. Uh, coming up next, locking the ratchet head into position. The ratchet head can be locked into predefined positions of 0, 15, and 90 to the left and right, obviously. Um, 0 doesn't go either way, 15 and 90 do, so that's your 2 to the left, 2 to the right, 1 straight up, 5 positions. And then simple direction change, the Zyklops pocket ratchet features a thumb wheel that can be used to quickly and easily switch between clockwise and anti-clockwise, or as we would say counterclockwise, at any position. So, this to me was again the most intriguing. It is not, and I cannot stress that enough, it is not what I think would be the most practical thing for me. It's also way smaller than I thought. I know they call it pocket. I know some of you EDC people are kind of delighted. It legit looks like a Coke bottle, which is kind of cool. It's got that shape. Um, already ergonomically, I've found an issue that I'm not thrilled with, um, and that would be this cap. So I have never, believe it or not, and it's hard to believe at this point, I don't know how many 80 some odd KC tool hauls and special editions we've done, I have never had a Zyklops ratchet. I have two Vera ratchets, I have the big old style, and then I've got the Coloss, which is like the Halloween is coming zombie apocalypse, yellow chisel driver, extension, use it as a hammer and a ratchet, all in one tool. Uh, super cool thing there, not going to be like your most precise or finite thing, but very cool nonetheless. This has always been on my list, obviously not this, but you know, like I was going to come in and probably get three eighths unless there was a big sale on a quarter or something crazy. It's just, it's never happened. It's never been tool of the day. There's never been a big sale. Um, that's just kind of how the chips have fallen on that. I stick to my principles unless I need something like these two drivers. Obviously, the door kind of kind of pricey at 20 bucks, but I need it. I want to see if I can get that in there and not break it. If it goes, I've got my back up in place. Hopefully, I can find that 4.0. Uh, the 4 millimeter is kind of a sweet spot there. Uh, 4.5 is kind of just a little too big, but... Anyway, um, I stick to what I tell you. Like, I wait for sales. I wait for tool of the day. Obviously, on this stuff, it's kind of a deal where this truly was, like, something I wanted to purchase. You know, I was in the market for an impact driver. This, if I didn't make videos, I, I would have wanted it. 
I would have held out hoping it hits Tool of the Day or gets like super sweet pricing at Christmas or something, but I don't know if I would have brought this in. And there's a couple of reasons. This has a very high chance of becoming like the Turbo to me. Turbo, super cool driver for the right segment of people. If they're aware that it exists, it's awesome. It's gonna like be a game changer for what they do. For the average person, it's like, wow, this is cool, you know, and it's comical to use, but how many times do you turn a ground lug, right? Or how many terminal blocks are you going to change? Maybe you're wiring your car, maybe you got like tiny little set screws and there's like 16 or 32 of them, but past that, you know, like, is that enough to justify the purchase of this expensive tool? Not really, <laughs> you know what I mean? And so that's where this comes in. EDC people are probably going to freak about it. It'll probably go over really well. It's probably got a ton of potential. But this, if it works, totally justified. Another item I haven't shown you. I think it's probably the most practical. And then this guy, though, has like the biggest bust potential. Not to say it will, but the big bust potential is there. So the first thing I'm noticing is this lip. Now, it's cool because you need to be able to open the bit magazine, but it sticks out just enough, and that part line is just enough that I don't like it. It's kind of bothering me. I feel it in my hand, and it goes from like being ergonomic and comfortable to, oh, you know, I've got plastic digging into me. My thoughts, having never had the Zyklops, you know, and I'm rushing through things, I was thinking like, okay, well, that's going to be how we open this. And so I assumed then when everyone corrected me and said, hey, you know, that's for locking the five positions of the head. I thought, oh, well, you know, maybe there'll be like the push button. There's not a push button. It's a pull. So we're going to get that out of the way. It's pull, and it's kind of what you would have come to expect. It looks to be fairly well executed. Again, I do like their take it easy bit finder stuff. But we'll just go ahead and pull the number two Phillips. This gives you a look at the bit carousel. Now, note, you don't have to turn the ratchet. You can turn this if you're so inclined, whatever you prefer personally. And then closing it right there. I would have loved to have seen either, you know, a manual button or, you know, the push style that we're accustomed to with their other bit carousels. But it is nice. You do get a good assortment of bits there, again, depending if you go Imperial or Metric. Now, the other thing I thought this might have been was it was going to be an extension. This is before they released videos of it turning into a spaceship and everything. Like, I thought, oh, wow, you know, it's going to be like the James Bond driver where it's going to shoot out and have like a three-inch neck or something and be super cool. Nope, it's just to lock the head. Now, this is the other thing that worried me, and it's true. So <laughs> I'm going to come in, and I'm going to pull this down, and... It's going to lock right there at 90. I'm going to pull it down again. Hands away. It's locked at 15. I know 15 doesn't look like much, but it really is case in point. Pull my hand away. Locks at 90. So 90 degrees. And then we come down. It almost seems more natural to go up. Just a personal thing. It's locked at 15. We pull down. It's locked straight on. 180, 0, whatever you want to call it. We come down, lock at 15, and we lock at zero. So here's the thing, though. If I get right here, and I don't want to be straight up, I want to be in between, I might want this angle, okay? And the problem is, as soon as inevitably you put an extension or a socket or whatever, it's going to come down and it locks, okay? I thought that this would be free floating, kind of like a roto head ratchet where, you know, if I need to be in this position or I mean, if it, if I get right here and I hit a header tube and this pops down, you know, if so be it, but it's just going to go until it locks. So essentially you've got 14 degrees here, zero to 15, and that's really not super useful. You'd probably just go 15. So you've got like 16 to 89 where you can play, but it's going to be super easy to unfortunately have that locked down, and that sucks. Um, I wish that, you know, it's nice that it locks into position, but I wish that you could disable that, you know? Um, it's just me thinking out loud there. In terms of the ratchet note, do you think, oh, it's quick release? No, totally different drive design. We'll get to that in a second. So the thumb wheel here is, uh, I'm not super happy with that. I get that it has to be small. The ratchet mechanism doesn't seem too bad. That's good news. Now, if I want to change directions, 
not the easiest thing to do not super difficult but you know i get it they're trying to maintain a compact profile but i don't know i guess this was lost because of the tight tolerances here you know like if this head came out just a little bit you know you could have that switch because i mean honestly this is probably the easiest place to switch directions you know uh, there's also sadly i guess no lockout where you would just be straight non-ratcheting I'm having a hard time getting it to do anything in this position. Um, I think now he's switched. <laughs> so, yeah, man. It's kind of what I was afraid of. Now, it's not a, not a lost cause. This is my job. I can't come in here and tell you the sky is, you know, wonderful every single day when there's hail falling from it, right? Uh, I simply bring them in and I present the tools. You know, this, if it works, I feel very good about it. This had the big bust potential. I felt it. I knew it. My past experience says, mm, I don't know. Uh, but it's still cool, and it still could be super functional and useful for me. It's just not quite what I, what I would have hoped. There's a few subtle things I would do differently that I think could make it a way better tool, at least for me. May not be for most people, but for me it would be great. So what I want to do now is highlight this. You need to sit there and you look at the barrel and you're like, okay, there's a square drive. It's just hollowed out for the bits. Cool. Yeah, it is. And not super strong, but I don't think you're going to lose the bits. So right here we come in and we've got our bit ratchet, right? We want to just drive the thing down. I keep wanting to... Like, utilize you'll adjust to it everyone will adjust but right here we'd come in and we would just ratchet down the issue that you're gonna have with this and I'm just gonna straight up highlight it right now with this guy number three Phillips not the best example but if we're wanting to tighten something down here there's a very large chance that this roto head which they've done a nice job keeping streamlined it's still bulbous right I mean look at that you've got a big barrel here you just want the smooth shaft case in point we can come in here with another driver whether whatever your brand of choice is and that's super thin and compact right so I can have a handle to handle right here going by the hex bolster and this is super thin and isn't going to hit things this is going to run into everything so if you're in an open space it's awesome if you're in tight quarters it's gonna be an issue now the solution a workaround for that would be to use longer bits now we can elevate this up and we can possibly clear obstruction a if there's obstruction b you need a longer bit or an extension to be totally fair in their kits they have the extension and i think that's what we need as of me purchasing this stuff it was not available standalone i hope that it is because this would be a big selling point for me and i'm not going to be able to utilize it so uh, what we need to do now, this did not come with any sockets. We need to get sockets, so give me one second. All right, another reason for me not getting the set aside from one, it wasn't available, uh, is two, I already had the sockets, right? So we're just going to come in and we're going to go 9 16 This is going to be interesting. When you take a look at the square drive that's hollowed out for the bit, and I spin it around, some of you are going to notice something. And if I do it again and go faster and run my fingers across it, there is no detent. And that's because this is set up to utilize not only a magnet to hold your bit, right? So down the barrel of this thing where they've hollowed out the 3 8 square drive, there's a magnet. If you come to the perimeter, we have two magnets here. Now, are these strong? I don't know. Let's test it with the bit. Uh... In and of themselves, I would be quite worried. Now, the thing is, they're going to also have this square drive to keep it captive. I think between that and the two magnets, you should be okay. But there's going to be situations where I feel like we're, especially with a deep socket. Okay. Um, <laughs> My biggest fear with this isn't necessarily, you know, like, I don't think we're going to have it drop off. Maybe if the magnets get, like, grease and rust or something, you know, it could be a weak bond and you might lose it, especially if it's heavy, like a deep socket. But what I think the problem is going to be, you know, many times when you're doing something, either the socket gets stuck on the fastener a little bit, and I'm not talking like C's, I'm just saying like it catches really well, 
or it's a deal where you're in this position, you get down there and you ratchet, 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 and then somehow this winds up binding against, say, like a collector flange or something. So you're thinking like, okay, I've got it almost to, there it is it's tight and then you go to pull your tool out and the socket stays there and then you got to extract the socket somehow right so that could be a problem <laughs> and the other problem is simply again going to be this is a big bulky mechanism versus just a standard socket or socket and extension you might run into clearance issues um, that extension would be really really nice right now but uh this is this is undeniably cool i mean that's one of the reasons it's here i felt like this had a chance of being a bust i felt like it had a chance of kind of like oh hey that's really cool but can i ever really use it or will i choose to use this versus a standalone ratchet or a standalone bit driver or something and you almost will have to make yourself do that, you know, to get full use out of this. Now, the Zyklops function is kind of cool. Again, like I said, I've never had one. Uh, the switching of directions is not as fluid as I would personally like. I think you'll adjust to it, but it's almost like, I mean, look how much turning I have to do to make this happen, okay? So we're going this direction, you know, ratchet and tighten. So now if I spin this, all that way now we're tightening and we're ratcheting come back it's just you know like you're used to a switch i guess you know like an internal switch or something or a different style on a roto head even where there's just like the three prongs typically i think i can adjust to that i'll eventually get used to this i wish that there was a lockout for that and you could have this just totally free flow and then you could flip the switch and you could have it lock in position. That's kind of what I think would be super cool. But it's not, not terrible. Now, I think what I'm going to do now is go ahead and let's see. Where is that bag? It's got to be here somewhere. I'm going to gonna show this thing off, okay? I was already thinking when I picked that up, like hey, you know, we we might have some issues with this thing because this is a big bulky thing and it would work if it was just had that extension. And I, of course, I could not buy the extension. It's not available still as I speak. Hopefully it will be standalone in the future. Now, if you're somebody that hates ball, teens, ball detents or something being tight, like this is your ticket. This is really, really nice <laughs> in terms of getting it removed. This item right here, it is going to be Vera's part number Let's see here, 8796SB, I believe. At least that's what they have typed out. Uh, 003591, if you want to find it on KC Tool, $15.81. Kind of a reasonable price. And this is what it is, all right? And I went ahead, and I, I was thinking ahead here big time, folks. Uh, aside from getting a wire cutter for this. <laughs> Should have thought of that if I wouldn't interrupt it all the time. Probably would have. Can we just get it out with the twin grips? There we go. Thank you, Knipex. Just, uh, these come out pretty easy if you cut them, and we very well may wind up having to do that. Sizzle driver saves the day. So, now, here's what I was thinking. I was already like, you know what? That's going to be almost rendered useless unless you're like in a perfect scenario or no obstruction. Now, I'm never in good scenarios like that. I always have something obstructing and requiring an extension or a deep socket or something. So I thought, hey, I'm going to get an extension. And this is from Zyklops, right? So it's got the nice spinner handle and everything. If you note right here, the green and the red. This is me thinking ahead again. I come in and we've also got ball detent right there. So I take our little 9 16th socket and we press this little tab right here on the bottom side up. The socket's not coming off. Now... <laughs> Put me back in that same situation with a header collector where this kind of starts to grab and I tighten it up and we're good to go. And I'm like, ooh, came right off. This time I at least have the extension there that I can go grab. Uh, the other thing I was sort of thinking, I keep wanting to press this to rotate the head and it's actually the switch here. But when we lock in, you can come in and like if we were tightening, you know, and ratcheting down, we've got the spinner sleeve. Some people like it, some people hate it, but since that's 
extension this design for this wasn't there I thought well I'm just gonna go with this now in terms of light duty stuff or just EDC like hey this is it's way better than not having anything I'll totally give it that the greatest feature of this in my opinion is the square drive and the 3h drive like that to me it's really really innovative super cool but again it's a deal where that's probably not going to work very well this works a little bit but if we come in i'll just grab this one for contrast this is some of Vera's 89 millimeter bits you almost need if you don't get that extension that they include in their set and i hope they offer individually here pretty soon you basically need an 89 millimeter bit to equate to what you would have with a standard you know like four inch shaft type of a setup right and this will allow you to use this tool have the ratcheting effect have the swiveling head have the bit magazine which if this was an extension then this bit magazine <laughs> which uh, i'm not a huge fan of compared to the pop-out versions uh, then these become useful because if they're short we're in the same boat where i can't access virtually anything with this right uh, or very limited applications whereas with this bit we can do a heck of a lot more it's just a situation it's not going to store in here right so we need the extension to make these bits that are included useful now with that said we've had to stop so i don't really know how much time we've invested in this but there's more that's right there is more and we're going to get to it right now this might be something some of you drag out across a couple of days you know something just pause it and resume you know start it on break watch some more on lunch finish it after work or the next day you know that's why i do timestamps. box of Ghidorah goodies you're like man i thought you were doing the new vera stuff well i am but first we have to go back in time a little bit so this is the turbo all right so yet another interruption but right here we have the turbo okay and it locks out you press the button and now you're in turbo mode very cool very useful for the right person this would be amazing for the average person it's super cool and useful on rare occasions now coming in over here this is kind of what i want to highlight this is pretty functional this is their pistol grip 45 degree fixed you know it can't do everything the little edc uh, zyklops can do right you know it can do this angle and you can kind of match it and it can do everything in between and lock in different positions this is a fixed trick this is a one trick pony here but pay attention we come down here and you can see it says press or you'll just have to take my word that it says press and when i press it do you see how the bit carousel pops up right so i'm going to hold my hand here just index finger and thumb and i'm going to hit press and it pops up having that here versus that which i feel like i'm going to break the thing i have to kind of like apply i guess if i get used to it or baby it you don't do that but like if i just come up to it and open it <laughs> <laughs> it pops out you'll notice also kind of binding didn't do that at all the first times now it kind of is i don't know if what the deal is but i think if we had like a press button here that would have been the best way to handle that bit carousel this thing is i mean it's if i can keep my palm out of that i don't have really a complaint with the ergonomics of it the problem is like it's constantly like getting me there uh, and again, this, I personally, I think going up would have been more user intuitive. The rotating, I think I'll get used to that. I wish there was a switch. I get why they can't do it with the space constraints. Um, it's also weird. I keep wanting to hit that, I think, because it's like a different color and it does nothing. I guess it gives you nice support, you know, if we were sitting here going to town. Uh, this, like I said, is probably the coolest thing. We really need an extension to utilize these bits. And then with this guy right here, uh, we gain some functionality in terms of extended reach and everything. It's just, it's still going to be a weak connection at this point. So if you're thinking like, hey, why did you bring this out? You're saying the same things you've been saying. Well, here's why I'm going to show you right now, because I have this. If you noted it was in there, you're like, oh, you already opened it. It's cool. So yeah, this is the 416R. It's a T-handle and it's a bit holder. So if I come in, I can take the number two Phillips from our little Zyklops pocket. It's got the rapid adapter and boom, I've got a number two Phillips and a T-handle. <laughs> and you're like, awesome, where's the ratcheting function? 
Well, I don't have one because this is old. This is something that was made and purchased long before they had the ratcheting version of this tool. So we eject the bit, we put it back in place, we grab this guy, set him down, and we go to get this. This is what I bought. It is the Vera 411A RA. This thing, I went tool only for $72.50. They do have sets and you're gonna jump up 50 bucks to about 122.50. And if you think, well, hey, this looks just like that thing. You know, well, what's the difference? Same, same ergonomics, it's slightly long. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Where's the rapid adapter? This doesn't have that. It's got that, whoa, wait. Wait, you say, it's a T-handle. <laughs> yeah, T-handle with quarter square drive, okay? And if you're thinking like, well, hey, why did you buy that and not get this one? Well, the answer is quite simply, I have this one. And no, this does not ratchet. This is a non-ratcheting deal. But my thoughts were, and what sold me the most on this, which I believe out of everything they announced, assuming I don't have great results with that impact driver, this is the safest buy for me personally. This is something I will use. I will use a lot and will come in super handy and I'm thrifty, so I'm going to show you something we did that you can do that will kind of give you two tools in one. So, first thing first, this actually does ratchet. This is it's kind of crazy. My biggest fear with this, just like with the pocket Zyklops, I kind of foresaw some potential issues. With this, I thought, okay, you know, this seemed like it fit okay. I kind of like Philo's T-handle, and it's super cheap and great, you know, fractions of the price what's this one going to be like when they put a ratcheting mechanism in there and it's going to be like some fat massive thing and am I even going to like the ergonomics of it? Well, that fear is absolutely uh, rendered null and void. If I take this one, this is what the rapid adapter is our bit driver T-handle. This is our <laughs> brand new ratcheting one. They're like the exact same dimensions. Vera did a fan, I don't know how they did it, but they literally, in the body of this tool, which I mean, I'm gonna give you every angle that I can, they incorporated a ratcheting mechanism and you would never know. If I took these apart, if I would have bought the bit holding one, I could lay these out side by side. If you don't see you know, that one's ratcheting and one's standard by way of the part number, you would never know. And if you're thinking like, well, hey, show me, show me this ratcheting mechanism. I don't believe it. Well, check it out. The L and the R are there for a reason, left and right, tight and loose. What is this you say? Is that a quick release? <laughs> yes, it is. Pay attention to the ball detent. It gets sucked in. And then right there, you've got the ejection pin. This thing is so nice. 7250. Yeah, I'll admit it's steep. I had my fears about, you know, like the ergonomics with the size of the ratcheting mechanism. That is a non-issue for me. If you were hoping it was bigger and fatter, you might be disappointed. But for everyone else, if you have one of Vera's T-handles, I would assume, I don't own any, but if you had, say, like their ball end hex T-handles, I would think it would be the same profile there. This thing has so much potential. <laughs> And, uh, it was the cheapest of these items by a considerable amount, but I think it is the safest one for me, and it is just pretty crazy. So right there, left and right, we can rotate over. It's not the easiest thing to get in there, but it isn't too bad. And again, listen to that mechanism. Super cool, right? Uh, let me get this out of the way. We'll use the Picard. It was tool of the day here recently, even though the Knipex is right there. I've been cleaning, so I don't have all the wire cutters I should. We'll test the durability of the ratchet mechanism right now. Uh, that was totally planned, by the way. <laughs> and, uh, okay, it popped up. It's still functional, but this lifted out. Um, I could dissect it, but this is running long anyway, so we just pushed it back in place, and I have a low battery light. Fantastic. Let me show this to you, okay? This is something I already had. This is a long quarter drive extension. It's basically the equivalent of what we just put on the pocket Zyklops. I've got a quarter drive already, quarter inch socket already in place. So let's say we we're doing fuel clamps or something, right? This is super cool now. The only thing I could complain about, I wish there was a lockout on this. I wish there was left, right, and just neutral in the middle where it was just standard locked fixed position, whatever you want to call it. That said, 
picture, if you will, like I'm just running this thing down and then we get to the point where it starts to get tight. Instead of me having to constantly go like this and slow the process down, I just start to ratchet. This to me is, this is the bee's knees in terms of what we just picked up from Vera. I'm going to pop this guy off. forgot to use the ejection pin. <laughs> and, uh, I want to highlight something uh, that's probably going to be regrettable because I still didn't grab a pair of side cutters for this. Uh, it's right here. It is Vera's part number, 8784, or if we come in, if you want the KC tool equivalent, uh, this sucker is going to be 003529. It's 20 bucks, but I think it's going to be $20 very well spent. It's this. And if you're thinking like, whoa, what, what is that? Well, it's something that we're about to mangle 110% by way of these twin grips. And you know what? With the battery light so low, and I don't, I was about to just rip this off. Let me pause. If you're curious, all you have to do to get these to come out really nice and not mangled is just cut them. As you can see, we had our little Stavillas. We snipped it there, and it literally slides up. So. What this is, if you're thinking like, hey, that looks just like this thing. Well, it pretty much is, minus a few subtle differences, right? And most notably, this goes on to the shaft of our T-handle, and this one has quarter drive accessibility. So, if you're, if you're catching what I'm doing here, I take this, and I put it on, and what did I just do? Well, I took this that we previously had, this long extension and a quarter, quarter socket on, and I turned it into basically a $72.50 ratcheting bit driving T-handle. So the tool that I didn't buy is this one that would have this ratchet mechanism for $72.50, but by me buying the T-handle that I can use with sockets, quarter drive extensions, and this bit holder for 20 bucks, which if this is what you primarily are going to do it with, but you want the ability to possibly put sockets on it, get this rapid adapter and you've created like two tools in one, you know, you're saving yourself about $75. But if you're thinking like, man, that's a really good idea, but I don't really want to pay 20 bucks for that. Well, this is an item that I've had really good luck with. Sadly, it's made in Taiwan, uh, but I've yet to wear one out. It's from Ghidorah. It's right here. I'll have it linked. The price point is like stupid cheap. Uh, 561 I think when I used to get them they were like sub four dollars even so basically for a quarter of the price you can get this okay and what it is it is a quarter drive bit adapter so we come in we take our Vera bit from the Zyklops pocket and it just holds it in place this is like spring retention we then come in we grab our ratcheting t-handle we line up the ball detents and we have created <laughs> Again, poor man's version, two tools in one, basically. You can absolutely buy this ratcheting version, and you could put a quarter to quarter adapter, which I actually have some from Dia over here, and you could cheese it that way, you know, and like kind of then put your sockets on there and everything. In my opinion, this is more robust and more practical when you're trying to get the most bang for your buck. So, um, if you don't like the idea of having the fancy rapid adapter or you just want to do it as efficiently and economically as possible, you can snag this guy for around five bucks. It does the same job. And at the end of the day, you let's say that you always use T15s and T25s and a number two Phillips and a number one Posi. You could buy four of these for the same price as this rapid adapter. Have your bit set up, whatever bit of choice that you want to. Have them populated somewhere on a rail in your toolbox. And then come to this guy that you typically use with quarter and five sixteenths and we'll say seven, eight and 10 millimeter sockets also on the same rail. And then when you want to switch from, let's say you just did some clamps with quarter or five sixteenths and you want to go to your bit and you need a number one posse, boom. And it's all quick release. <laughs> and the biggest thing is this ratchets. That's the huge selling point. And in my opinion, it's better to go this route than ratcheting with this route. Unless, of course, you're only going to use bits. Then, yeah, by all means. But this one, it's cheaper to kind of kit it out and accomplish what the other tool does. So um, that's that. This is a mess. This took way longer than I wanted it to. I probably should have just done standalone videos on each one of these. If you want to see more on them, I can make it happen. 
Uh, I only get so much limited free time in my life, and I kind of sometimes get in crunches here, and then I get interrupted constantly, and I do the best I can. Uh, it's all super exciting and cool stuff, but ultimately, I wanted to get this out there for you to see. That way, if you look at this and you're like, my lord, I had no idea there was no ball detent. That magnet seems super weak you might pass on it. Some of you are like, you know what, I've always hated ball detents and that doesn't bother me at all and what I'm doing. Like, I mean, to be fair, this is a very heavy extension. I don't have any deep sockets handy, but it's holding that. So, I mean, it's not like it's pathetically anemic magnets or anything. It's just, it's so different than what most of us are used to. That's something you kind of have to take into account. So, um, for me, the new stuff... <laughs> <laughs> the bee's knees is basically this guy right here, the ratcheting T-handle. I think I pretty well alluded to that in the video when we kind of highlighted the new stuff. This is super cool and going to be very, very practical for me. This guy is kind of more of a novelty, but I'm going to give it a fair shake. I might wind up loving it. Um, there's just a few things that like I would have, like right now I'm trying to change directions and like you'll see I'm rotating it instead. So... Just a couple of minor gripes I have on this. Um, I don't know. <laughs> it's cool. It's still out of everything. It's the most intriguing by far. It's just it had the biggest boom or the biggest bust potential. And for me, I'm not going to call it a bust. I don't think it's a bust at all. It's just it's not going to be something ideal for me and what I do on the day-to-day. -day. Now, in terms of like, let's try this out. I haven't done it. I'm going to ratchet this guy up, lock it into position. That's going in the pocket. That's not bad at all. So for the EDC people, this thing, it accomplishes that goal and that's probably the main selling point. I'm probably being a little too harsh on this because I'm thinking of this in a tabletop workshop, you know, industrial here in the shop type of a thing setting. And it's probably designed like I've got this in my pocket and oh, you know, I'm at my girlfriend's house and she just bought some trash furniture that I have to assemble, you can totally do it with this. Similar, you're walking into a friend's house and the cabinet hinge comes off. You happen to just have a very, very nice, uh, this is 72 tooth, I think it's all 72 tooth, if I'm not mistaken, uh, ratchet, and you can do the job. You even have the bits with you. You know, it's EDC wise, I, this is probably pretty legit. I'm probably not looking at it with the right mindset to be totally fair, but there are a couple the ergonomics are really solid aside from this little cap which sticks out ever so slightly and just kind of kind of rubs me wrong over time you know it might kind of wear down or just like kind of break in and get accustomed to it uh, this i still think for me personally sliding up would be easier but it's functional i'm sure i'll adapt and get used to it i do wish the head rotated freely i would almost rather have it rotate freely than lock personally uh, you could always come in and tighten it down. Um, this part is super cool. The magnets are definitely unique. I think it'll get the job done most of the time, especially again in an EDC situation. But you know, if you're like really planning to buy this and use it every day at work, it's you might run into some frustrations. But for EDC, just to have it, have it handy, I think it's probably hard to go wrong. I would advise you wait for a sale or tool of the day, which may not happen anytime soon. You're either going to love this thing and want it immediately, or you're going to be like, oh, I don't know. And if you're in that second camp, if you're hesitant at all about it, try to hold out for a price drop, a sale, whatever it may be. For everyone else, you probably were sold on this and hate me now, you know, for critiquing it. But I have to be fair to the tool. I have to be fair to you. If I came in and say I love everything, that's disingenuous. It's not honest, and you can't take me seriously. So uh, it's, like I said, regardless of any shortcomings, I can't deny how cool this is, and I still love Vera for constantly innovating. They don't just come up with this crazy stuff. They actually produce it. I will always admire that. Even with a turbo, where I can't use it very often to its full intended potential, I see what the potential is, I recognize it, and I think, man, if I had to do this a lot, this would be sweet. I'm not a huge EDC person, um, but this is undeniably cool. It's got some shortcomings, but it's undeniably cool. This thing right here, out of those, you know, these three items from Vera, 
This is the most practical. It's pretty dadgum neat. I'm gonna be super content with it. This one, it all comes down to if I can get it to work or not. If this works as advertised, if this turns something 10 degrees out of the 40, if it breaks it free and it rotates it, I'll be content. And it's also, again, just, if this does function, the space savings, there's so many times those huge handle guard things will not fit where you need them to you. This eliminates that. If this is a smaller body even than say like those, they're not huge, but I mean, you know what I'm talking about, the classic black with like two knurled pieces, you know, it's pretty beefy. This is a, kind of like an in-between between a standard driver and one of those. And if it functions, I think this will actually, I was pretty concerned about this purchase. After seeing it, looking at the bits, I kind of think it'll, if it functions at all, I'll be pretty content with this one too. So we may have to demo that thing. I'll, it's kind of hard to find situations when you don't just find them. You know, or, like I can't just create a C's number three Phillips, you know, or find the hexes, but it just is something you come across when you come across it, you know. So we'll take a gander at that. But I feel way better having had that in hand now. It's a pretty impressive unit if it functions. I've just had terrible experience with those in the past. I hope it gets the job done. This thing, it's pretty cool. It's just, there's a, there's a few things that I wish would have been done differently. And then the saving grace though, this thing is going to be killer for me. I know some of you may not care about the T-handle. Some of you think it's stupid or it's like those other two are far, far and away better. This thing is pretty legit. So I'm pretty stoked with that one. But I showed you some tips and tricks there, kind of to turn this tool into that tool, that tool into this tool, get the most bang for your buck. Um, let me know your thoughts on all this, especially if you've got it, if you picked them up, if I'm like way too harsh on the tool, or if you're like, man, you know, he's kind of right. See what he's saying about that little cap at the bottom. Um, I don't want to go back into it too much because of the low battery light. But yeah, uh, ultimately, time will tell. I might wind up loving this thing and hating the T-handle. You know, the impact driver may work great and then brake, it may never work. It's just time will tell. This is all just an initial impression here on the bench. As I get to use these in real world situations, we can formulate a much better opinion. Uh, same thing here. I'm pretty stoked about trying this guy out. It's super small. You, in theory, would never want to do what I'm going to do with it but this is impressively strong so i'm stoked about that guy this is my backup they're going to be going tomorrow to work with me so uh let me know your thoughts on all this stuff like i said that's why i make these videos if you need me to go into more detail if you want standalones on them i can do the same thing but like i said time will tell that's always the ultimate judge so uh cool stuff nonetheless i'm excited to try it all out i could be pleasantly surprised by this i could be disappointed by that this thing may work amazing it's just all up in the air right now we gotta gotta get some seat time with the new tools so on that front thank you so much for watching again uh in these situations in the future please tell me now would you prefer standalones that would be more digestible like 20 to 25 minutes on each tool or just one giant conglomerate uh, I tried to go through it as quick as I can. Uh, I don't do anything by script, obviously. We just kind of ad-lib it as we go. I can sweeten them down, make them shorter, you know, standalone, post unboxing reviews and impressions, whatever. If you got thoughts on any of that, let me know. But I got to get inside, have some supper. It's way late now. And uh, I had a good time, though. Hope you did, too. <laughs> With that said, LoneStarMopars.com is the website. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all three at Lone Star Mopars. With that said, thanks for watching. I hope I catch you back here for more action from the shop.